Welcome to Gaming Rev, Valheim series, episode 3, Construction and Physics. I mentioned in the previous video about how real-world physics sort of applies, and how with different things, if you don't build properly, stuff will fall on your head. Here you can see the foundation is blue, the next one up is green, and the one above that is a slightly lighter shade of green. They're all fairly sturdy, the weight is all above the central pillar that's going into the ground. But if we build out from the side of it, we don't have to go too far before things start going wrong. There are four spars out and we've now got a bright red spar, an orange, a light green and a green. The higher up you go, obviously the more precarious things are. So the orange comes as the second, the red as the third. If you build anything onto the end of the red, it's just going to fall off and break. So let's experiment with that. And there we go. <laughs> so the obvious answer is that you need to build supports underneath these things. If we put a pillar at the end of the bottom, all of a sudden they've all turned green because there's support there that will distribute the weight evenly. Again, if we build up from that pillar, all of a sudden, green, yellow and green. So the more you actually place upright supports in, the sturdier your building will be, the less likely it is that it's going to fall down under its own weight. Note this won't make it any stronger for somebody attacking it, but it will at least stop your building falling down. So a typical sort of frame side of a house, all of which is green. You can build within it with no problems. It does, however, mean it takes quite a bit of wood or later on in the game stone to actually build these things. Again, you can experiment, you can remove the supports, and if you start taking them out, you'll notice one support doesn't make a lot of difference, everything's still green. Take the second one out, and all of a sudden, there starts to be pressure on the wood. We've got yellow and orange again. Take that support out now. There we are. Red, orange, yellow. Now if we take the bottom one out, well, real world physics guys, everything's going to collapse. So within building you've got the campfires, you can build stacks of rock or wood and uh, you can build a raft or boats in later game. Cooking station is essential, workbench obviously we've seen earlier. Chopping block helps to upgrade. You've got the various different parts of buildings, walls, roofs, uh, staircases, you've also got a couple of fences there that you can use. The state wall is particularly good for defensive structures. And then the bed, storage chest, and a torch. Now, as you find new items, find new recipes you can use, then so the amount of things that you can build grows. So when you find your first metals, copper, tin, and make brass, you'll get new me uh, menus. Oh. Um, added into the construction. So you see the work management is one star. It limits what we can build but it also limits what we can repair or upgrade. So we're going to go and get some flint now. We're going to put um, a chopping block next to it which needs 10 flint. And then that will mean that we can upgrade the workbench to a level 2 workbench 
which means that we can upgrade our tools to make them last longer. Durability is key in this game. Now flint is found around the coastline of the meadows biome and the meadows is where you'd normally land first time round. It's the silver looking metal blocks as I think they look, I don't think they look like stone um, that are lying around the edge of the water sometimes on land, sometimes in water and you just need to swim or walk out to get them so we've got the flint we need, let's head back home again if you're close to your base and you're not going to need to fight anything I suggest running it almost everywhere it will help build up your running skill which reduces the amount of stamina it takes to run to places. When you go in the home always shut the door after you so nothing can follow you. So there's the chopping block and we're going to pop that just to the side so we can still get to the workbench but you can see from the dots that it's connected to the workbench so when we go back and open the workbench it's now level 2 that means that we can craft the fire arrows now and if we go to upgrades we can upgrade most of our equipment so repair everything well that's it for today's video thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoy some of my other videos and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care and see you on the next video.